Water is what's shaped the contours of Nantes. It straddles the Loire and is just 30 miles from the Atlantic. Water has also shaped the city's history and its identity, allowing the French to set sail and explore the world, but also to participate in the slave trade. It's had many different incarnations, a home for Breton royalty, the heart of France's shipbuilding industry. It's now reinventing itself as a maritime metropolis for arts and culture. For centuries, Nantes was a starting point for grand voyages, but these days it's the destination itself. And that's the idea behind A Journey to Nantes. It's a contemporary art project piloted by Jean Blaise, who's here to tell us more. Hello, Jean. Bonjour. Now, many of the artworks featured in A Journey to Nantes are exhibited outside. It's an open-air event, which is particularly appropriate this summer with the coronavirus pandemic. Now, tell me more globally, how has the health crisis affected the cultural sector here in Nantes? Alors c'est vrai qu'on a cette chance que euh, le voyage à Nantes, c'est un concept qui convient bien au coronavirus, puisque tout se passe en, dans l'espace public, à peu près tout. Hein. Mais évidemment, quand, quand le, 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 le confinement a été décidé, les entreprises se sont arrêtées, hein, tout s'est arrêté, et donc on n'a pas pu continuer à, à réaliser, à construire les œuvres. Bon. Donc certaines d'entre elles que nous avions imaginées, on les a supprimées, d'autres ont été remplacées, Il y a eu des, des allers-retours sans cesse. Il a fallu s'adapter et au final, quand même, on a réussi à créer ce parcours. I believe the first edition of A Journey to Nantes was in 2012. What was the identity or profile of the city before that? Was it known for arts and culture? Alors, dans ces années-là, la culture était déjà très importante. Hein puisque ça date, cette, ce, cette, ce dynamisme date des années 80, fin des années 80. Bon. Mais on s'est aperçu que cette richesse culturelle commençait à, à produire du tourisme, à appeler des touristes, euh, pas seulement français, mais aussi européens, euh, de Grande-Bretagne, d'Allemagne, de Belgique, de Suisse. Bon. Et on s'est dit qu'il fallait euh, aller encore plus loin que ce qu'on avait fait. Et on a euh, uni la culture et le tourisme. Every summer, the city is filled with installations, with sculptures, with events. Uh, we can see the work of Daniel Buren here next to us. And some of these works aren't just here for a summer. They become permanent pieces, additions to the city. Can you tell us a bit more about how they become part of the landscape? Et c'est très important. Parce que petit à petit, on a réalisé, euh, construit une collection d'œuvres pérennes qui marquent la ville, mais qui, sont pas, qui ne sont pas des œuvres qui viennent décorer la ville. Ce sont des œuvres qui ont été créées in situ et qui, d'une certaine façon, interprètent la ville. Daniel Buren, par exemple, montre l'estuaire à travers ses, ses lunettes, mais aussi rappelle le passé esclavagiste de la ville. Ce sont les anneaux hein, qui emprisonnaient hein, les, les esclaves dans les, dans les bateaux. Another of those permanent pieces is Mirti Drouet's installation Microm. Suspended in the old town, it's not only a reflection on how we inhabit city centres, it's also an innovative response to an architectural challenge. The idea is to put a building in a gap. So the gap is uh, the limitation. You have the neighbors on each side. You have to have the passageway under. So it's all those constraints that make uh, the architecture and the dimensions of Mikom. The comment I have most is that uh, it's uh, bigger than the person have expected when they were in the streets. Uh, it's, uh, whoa, uh, I didn't think that uh, there would be a real bed, like two-person bed, or uh, I thought that everything would be foldable and extra. Also that you are, uh, you are feeling like you're in a nest or something like that. So you are like protected and hidden in the heart of the city center. From the urban fabric to an ephemeral forest, this interior jungle was created by local artist Evor. It's a recent addition to the landscape, but its roots go deep into the maritime history of the city. To tell the truth, I just follow my instinct and my desire. 
But there is a very special uh, history here. For example, the sailors, uh, they used to bring back plants, exotic plants, for example, the first uh, tree palms or camellias. When I'm observing people, they left their mobile phone in the pocket first. It took time to see, to observe, to be submerged by the atmosphere, uh, to take time to slow down, which uh, nowadays is really a luxury to me. When they are speechless, or maybe when some of them, they just tell me, oh, you know, I, I feel so emotional. To me, it's really the, the reward. The COVID-19 pandemic is not the only obstacle to Nantes' hopes for waves of tourists this summer. The recent fire at the city's treasured Gothic cathedral completely destroyed its 17th century organ and seriously damaged parts of the building. Yet there are many other options for fans of cultural heritage. We take a look now at two important sites which tell the story of Nantes. A 15th century treasure in the heart of the city. From the outside, it looks like an intimidating fortress its interior, a beautifully restored glimpse of the courtly life enjoyed by the Dukes of Brittany. The castle also offers visitors a chance to immerse themselves in 500 years of local history, starting with the only woman to be twice named Queen Consort of France, to the industrial heritage of the famed Lou brand of biscuits in the 19th century. On est sur des visiteurs qui viennent principalement pour le château. Ils viennent parce que c'est le château d'Anne de Bretagne. Mais quand ils rentrent, la plupart des visiteurs ne sont pas forcément au courant qu'il y a un musée d'histoire de Nantes à l'intérieur. Et la grosse surprise, elle est là. C'est de se dire, bah, on a découvert l'histoire de Nantes. On avait, pour beaucoup de visiteurs, euh, on a un retour. On ne savait pas trop ce que c'était que la traite négrière. On ne savait pas trop que Nantes avait participé. Indeed, a significant part of the museum is dedicated to the objects, documents and learning resources which shed light on the transatlantic slave trade. And just a few streets away, on the banks of the river, a more poignant tribute, the memorial to the abolition of slavery. A solemn reminder that an estimated 550,000 Africans passed through Nantes on their way to a life in chains or death on the high seas before France abolished slavery in 1848. Je trouve intéressant le, le site en lui-même qui vient nous faire ressentir euh, un petit peu les cales euh, des bateaux puisqu'on est, on est en dessous et au niveau du fleuve, donc je pense que ça a été réfléchi. Et puis, euh, on ne peut ressentir que, que de la honte en, en tant que personne de peau blanche. D'imaginer qu'un être humain puisse penser qu'un autre être humain soit un objet, euh, qu'on qu ait le, le, le culot d'articuler ce vocabulaire-là, pour moi, c'est une vraie claque. Euh, je pense qu'on a mis beaucoup trop de temps pour exhumer euh, cette mémoire. Je pense que ces lieux commencent à être reconnus et reconnus, euh, pas suffisamment fréquentés. Il y a beaucoup de nantis qui ne se rendent pas compte qu'ils sont assis, que, 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 leur, que leur patrimoine a été généré par, par quelques exactions. Voilà. A space for meditation and reflection created in 2012, which seeks to educate tourists and locals about this dark chapter of French history. Another major draw for tourists is here on the Ile de Nantes. Once home to the city's shipyards, at the end of the 19th century, the waters of the Loire became too shallow for larger vessels and operations were gradually moved to the nearby port of Saint-Nazaire. Parts of this site languished as an industrial wasteland until the arrival of some strange mechanical creatures. Les Machines have become the city's steampunk mascots, from a merry-go-round of fantastical amphibians to the elephant who reigns supreme. I'm always amazed, not by the elephant himself, but by the 
le regard des primo-visiteurs la première fois qu'ils se retrouvent face à l'éléphant. Parce qu'on leur dit qu'il est grand, mais jamais ils imaginent qu'il fait 12 mètres de haut. Alors qu'un éléphant normal, c'est 3 mètres. Cette espèce d'ambiguïté euh, entre le mécanique et le vivant qui met un point d'interrogation au-dessus de la tête des gens, qui, leur en... qui les renvoie à leur propre imaginaire et qui les fait rêver. Et le but du jeu, c'est de faire rêver les gens. A curious carnival of animals which attracted 740,000 visitors last year, employing up to 160 people in high season. It's all choreographed by a team of technicians who encourage visitor participation. This is our laboratory. This is where we try things to make sure everything is working perfectly. So just behind me is a caterpillar. Quite huge, you can see it. And we're gonna make it crawl on its, uh, on its branch. One last stop on our journey to Nantes, the Cantine du Voyage. It's close to the Hangar à Banane, a former warehouse where exotic produce once arrived from overseas. These are just two of the hotspots breathing new life into this area, especially after the sun goes down. Otherwise, do check in with us here next time on Encore for more arts and culture here on France 24.